Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to address you today at this third interregional conference on cyber ICT security organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Korea in close cooperation with the OSCE. The topic of gender equality in cyber policy is timely and important to me personally. Please allow me today to touch on the ICT landscape and the UN processes dealing with the ICT issues, provide some thoughts on why the participation of women in UN processes and decision making is so central to achieving meaningful results, and to also touch on future work that needs to be done for diversity and gender parity when designing our digital future. Digital technologies are rapidly transforming our societies. As of January this year, there are over 4.6 billion active users of the internet worldwide. It is estimated that there will be 28.5 billion networked devices connected to the internet by 2022, an increase from the 18 billion in 2017. From personal devices to entire industrial control systems, hyperconnectivity presents tremendous potential for the socioeconomic developments of our societies. At the same time, our critical infrastructure, products and services have become highly dependent on technologies to function, making us increasingly vulnerable to ICT attacks. One such attack reportedly takes place every 39 seconds. Over the past one and a half decades, five UN groups of governmental experts, or GGEs, have studied the existing and emerging threats of ICTs to international security and recommended measures to address them. In 2018, two UN processes on ICTs were established, an open-ended working group and a GGE. I am happy to say both groups have recently successfully concluded their work. They agreed on concrete assessments and recommendations that range from principles guiding ICT capacity building efforts to insights on how states can implement the voluntary non-binding norms of responsible state behavior in the use of ICTs. The GGE report noted that the measures recommended by all the GGEs and the open-ended working group together represent an initial framework for responsible state behavior in the use of ICTs. A new second open-ended working group has also just held its organizational session and will begin its substantive work later this year. This brings me to the importance of more women decision makers in ICT security. The 2019 Open-Ended Working Group was the first time all countries in the world came together to consider how to tackle forward global ICT security. There were 193 women participants at the group but this only constituted 37% of the total participants. And only around 32% of delegations were led by women. The underrepresentation of women at multilateral fora can skew our ability to shape our security and common future. Research has shown that the meaningful inclusion of women in decision making makes our work more effective and productive and offers new perspectives and solutions. A report by UN Women has also indicated that the chances of reaching a successful peace agreement were much higher and more sustainable 
in cases where women were able to exercise a strong influence over the process. Ensuring the full and equal participation of women is not only the right approach, but a more uh, effective one. Furthermore, our data-driven societies hold inherent gender biases. For instance, machine learning biases have been reported in associating stereotypical roles such as homemaker and nanny to women. Some systems also demonstrate gender error in recognizing female faces or voices. Unless we pay more attention to these issues, we are at the risk of uh, locking in these biases in our future tech-based world. Through training and empowerment, we need to ensure that girls and young women can thrive and build their own expertise in areas of emerging and new technologies, particularly ICT security and artificial intelligence. These areas are transforming our societies, but are still designed, operated, and secured predominantly by men. Finally, we need to look ahead to continue to improve equal access and space for men and women to influence our digital world. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said that the equal, full, and effective participation of women in all decision-making processes is both a moral duty and operational necessity. In the world of diplomacy, while women still remain underrepresented, over time, the participation of women has gradually increased in some form. For example, at the final session of the group of governmental experts on ICTs, there were 11 female experts participating out of a group with 25 members. While this is not full parity, it is almost double the six female experts participating in the 2017 GGE. I am hopeful that the situation will continue to improve over time, spurred by the excellent initiatives such as the Women and International Security in Cyberspace Fellowship, sponsored by Australia, Canada, the Netherlands, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom, which facilitated the participation of 35 women diplomats from all over the world at the 2019 Open-Ended Working Group. Achieving gender equality in cyber policy takes both special temporary measures and cultural change towards gender inclusivity with a combination of efforts that need to happen simultaneously. To the women gathered in this virtual room today, you are quite literally leading by example. I would like to ask you to encourage next generation of diplomats and students to follow in your footsteps through mentoring and sharing of experiences. To the man in the room, your support for this endeavor is key, not least in view of the reality that this remains a male-dominated field. The importance of your role in achieving gender parity cannot be underestimated. Inclusion and diversity are shared goals that require common effort. Ladies and gentlemen, as an international gender champion, I have made a firm commitment to promote gender responsiveness and inclusivity in all the pro portfolios under my purview. I invite you to join in that commitment nationally and to make every effort to secure the equal, full and effective participation of women in decision making, including in the digital arena. At the same time, let us also collectively commit to concrete gender parity targets in the multilateral fora so that we reach our goals sooner rather than later. 
Thank you very much for your attention.